All right, so this is a topic I've probably covered before in previous videos as part of another review or some other topic and not necessarily by itself. And well, I might have made a standalone video at some point in the past, but I can't seem to find it. So yeah, I'm um, gonna make another one because this one is a, has a little bit of a twist. I think it's important. So I'm gonna be titling this with a PSA in there somewhere in, in the wording. So see, it's more informational in case you know, some of you guys don't know about this. Uh, hopefully it'll help you out. And if you already know about it, great. You know, let me know what your experiences are. So we all have had the issues of bad ESD flashes and that happens, it depends on the frequency or why it could happen. Maybe you have a bad USB port, bad USB cable, uh, something went wrong in your computer, um, your battery died when uh, you were in the middle of a flash, etc. So there's a myriad of ways where uh, an ESC flash can go wrong and then you end up with uh, basically um, unrecognizable uh, settings or uh, sometimes they'll, uh, when you read the settings or read the ESC, uh, they come up with these like weird Y characters or question marks or ESC is missing, uh, ESC doesn't show up at all, no error messages. So there's a variety of ways that these can show up. And they can show up in different ways in the different um, ESC configurators that you might be using, whether it's BLHeli BL -Heli S configurator, BLHeli 32 configurator, uh, ESC configurator via web browser, etc., BLHeli M configurator, etc. So, and oh, well, so also there's a JESC configurator. So there's a lot of different ways that this can manifest itself in the various um, programs out there, and. In order to, to get around this problem when you get a bad ESC flash, really the solution is to, well, first of all, you have to know what your target is for the ESC. And uh, if you don't know that, you might try and guess or might have some, ask somebody what it, might, what it should be from other people might know. But you need to know what that is. And then you check this little box and it's going to be different in a lot of different configurators. Basically, it's going to be like uh, ignore inappropriate MCU and layouts is basically saying, oh, okay, we're just not going to pay attention to what we're reading. We're just going to force flash the firmware to the ESC. And this will get you around this problem. Now, the twist on this um, new way of screwing up your ESC that I've discovered, or I actually one of my viewers discovered and told me about, is if you're flashing one of these whoops here that have a... Um, SPI based Express LRS receiver on board. So, and they're pretty sure it's limited to the ones with the F411, which I think most of them do. And if you're wondering, this is what the boards look like. They usually have these little tower antennas on there, but they're not limited to just that. Um, but basically, an SPI Express LRS receiver on board. And if you are connected, bound to the receiver, and you have your transmitter turned on, so here's a the jumper T light uh, V2. Express LRS, if this is turned on and this is bound to uh, this receiver while you're flashing, there's a pretty decent chance that it's going to uh, brick the ESC and you're going to get that weird, basically the, the flash doesn't, is, is, is not, it'll, it'll look like it's, it's successful, but it actually, the next time you plug it in, uh, it'll show up with those question marks or ESC missing. And then you also know by the fact that when you go in, um, try and do the motor test, those motors with e missing ECs won't spin. So that's another telltale sign. So obviously the solution is to not is to make sure that you're not connected to the uh, receiver when you're flashing. And of course, you know, these are built-in receivers. So if the flight controller has power, this receiver has power. Um, and of course, if you have a battery plugged in, if you're flashing these ECs, you know, uh, it's going to be connected. So don't have your transmitter on if you're uh, going to be flashing and updating your ECs, just that that pretty much will avoid the problem. I've never had this issue where the EC gets bricked when the transmitter is not connected. Now it doesn't always happen if the transmitter is connected. I, I did some my own testing, and about I would say one in five to one in ten, somewhere in that range, the EC will get bricked if you're connected uh, via the transmitter. But I've never had it happen where the transmitter is turned off. So that's the solution for that. And of course, you know, if you do happen to brick your ESC in this manner, 
like always, you can just click that little box that says ignore inappropriate MCU and layout and just make sure you have the correct target. And then you can go ahead and reflash these and everything should be good. Of course, again, make sure your ExpressLRS transmitter is turned off and you're not connected to the receiver on these SPI boards. Okay, so hopefully this is going to be a helpful video. If you like the video, like these kind of like short content type, you know, uh, limited topic uh, videos that are kind of helpful, uh, you know, let, let me know in the comments. Uh, give the video a thumbs up. Share the video. You know, I, I get, I'm looking at my analytics to see like how useful these are. And if I see that, well, no one's watching it, no one really cares, no one's sharing it, then it's less incentive for me to make more of these. So, you know, you know, if you want me to make more of these, then you got to let me know through what you guys do in terms of your interactions with the video and how you share and etc. So those are the things I'm going to be looking at. Um, also, leave me some comments as well. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Talk to you later.